doing street photography. And, you know, I, I sort of sketched out just some basic ideas about it. Certainly we, you're not, this is not the only way to look at it. I've left a lot of things out, but I, I just want to go over some just basic ideas about it. So it's observational, right? So what's what the photographer is inserting himself or herself into an environment or, an, or a location. Now, the Helen Levitt picture, I, I, you know, scholars would say that this young woman who's looking back at us is a collaborator, that a lot of artists today would now say that this person is collaborating with us. And so I think that's an interesting way of thinking about it when somebody's looking at the camera, when they become aware. Just wanted to point that out. Okay, so there's, it's usually a public place, whether it be a city, a streetscape, a beach, it could be a, a store, it could be a supermarket, it could be any public place, a park, you know, any place that either has humans or shows the evidence of humanity, which is the second one. So I think like we saw in that William Eggleston picture of the large tricycle, that's the evidence of humanity. And that also certainly falls under what I would call street photography. We've talked a lot about this, the, the social, you know, the social aspect and ca capturing what is happening so socially. Capturing, it's a, you know, a reflection of the culture and what's happening and how people interact. Now, right now, if you went out to take a picture, a reflection of the culture would be masks. It would be cell phones. So think a lot about that when you're out. You know, we're not going to get the same kinds of pictures that Gary Winogrand got. Um, also, this is sort of a solitary kind of art form, right? So it's a practitioner with a camera. So it's a person, un unlike a painter who has um, unrestricted, uh, an unrestricted unre view of the subject, the camera is a me mechanistic device that is between us and the subject. So that's just something to keep in mind. Some people feel more comfortable when they have a camera. I think Gary Winogrand felt much more comfortable with that sort of barrier. Timing, right? Timing. You know, if you see, I don't know, a bus coming in or a fishing boat coming in, you know, stick around. You know, something's going to happen. People are going to be in motion. Um, you know, it's sort of that, way of um, anticipating, like, I, like Ajay did, anticipating what that organ grinder and the, and the young girl were going to do. He knew they were going to sing and perform, right? So it's sort of anticipating what might happen. Um, so, th so this is a voyeuristic activity, right? We are, we are looking at people. We, we are interested in what's happening with human interaction and human activity. And then what we are selecting is in a frame, right? So what we, what we are working with is some sort of eight by 10, five by seven, one by one sort of proportion. So we need to be aware that what we are using is, in, is framed. And I would urge you not to crop your images. I would urge you to try to shoot full frame and you know, we'll talk about you know, what you shoot. So think about what's in the picture and maybe what's left out. So your selection, where you're standing, right, is going to allow you to, to take certain things, elements, you're gonna shoot certain things, but then there's a lot left out. So think a lot about what you're leaving out and, and why you're making that choice. Does anyone have any questions about this? We don't have a ton of time. I'm just gonna go through um, just, just the uh, examples of these. Oh, we were going to watch Bruce Gilded, but I think we'll wait till next time to watch Bruce Gilded. So, Bruce, this is uh, Bruce Gilded is uh, the photographer with the red sweatshirt. That's what he looks like when he's out on the street. He is a very tall, very gruff guy from Brooklyn, but he gets the most amazing pictures. So, in his way, even though he's over six feet tall, he manages to blend in with the scene. He manages to become part of the location. And I think that's really, really key to being a good street photographer. So this is Cartier-Bresson. So this is observational, right? So no one's looking at him. This is pretty much, maybe the guy in the upper right is, but 
you know, for the most part, this is an observation that he made. Again, we're working with pattern. We're working with form. We're working with diagonals and we're working with, with shape and, and, and light and dark. And Cartier Brisson is the master. He, he started all of this. And I urge you, if you're interested in street photography to look at Cartier Brisson's work. It's public, right? So we are in a public space, whether you live in a densely populated city or you live in a sparsely you know, um, populated village or even in a suburban environment, right? There are things happening. So I, you know, I love this photo because I, I love when, I love taking pictures of people taking pictures. So I, I, I think this is, it's really compelling to me. Humanity. So doing something that is uniquely human, doing something that connects with us. So we've all seen this picture by Eisenstadt. Whether, it's, whether it was posed or not, we don't know. And you know what? I don't care. I think it's a great picture. It's fantastic. It's one of the best pictures of the 20th century. And we can look at this picture again and again, and we see, we still see more, but what do, but what do we see like Helen Levitt? We see these very strong diagonals. We see a formal composition. This is a centered composition, which isn't always the most compelling a lot of the time, but, but, it's, but it works here. And we've got mid, mid ground, we've got foreground, mid ground and background. So it's a beautifully composed image at a very specific moment in time. Social. So this is Gordon Parks. So Gordon Parks um, shot a whole series of work in Harlem in the 40s. And he was very interested in the social interactions. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with this test that he's documenting here, but it was a, a test done by psychologists and I, I forgot that, I've forgotten the name of it, but where, um, where the, um, the, the, the psychologist presented a white and a black baby to both white and black children and asked them to choose which one, just make a choice. And black children overwhelmingly chose the white baby. So this is, this is a, an obvious social commentary. Solitary. We've got Bruce Gilden again. I, I love him as an example because the man is a mountain, but he blends in. He manages with all of this stuff, with all of his gear to not be seen. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. Timing. Mm. And I, we have a little time, we have just a little bit of time left um, to talk about the decisive moment. So Cartier-Bresson wrote a book called The Decisive Moment. And this was the, um, this sort of opened up the whole philosophy about street photography and explained it to everyone and had, has become, um, it's probably influenced more, more photographers than we can even, discussed today. And, and, and now there's sort of a backlash against the decisive moment, but it's really important though to think about the decisive moment and timing. So what happened before this and what happened after this picture? We don't know, but we don't care because Cartier Brisson caught this at the perfect moment. And that's what he trained himself to do. He trained himself to watch and he trained himself to wait. So this is, this is him talking about the decisive moment. So your eye must see a composition or an expression that life itself offers you. And you must know with intuition when to click the camera. So we can go out and we can train ourselves. We can train ourselves to be good um, observers. But at some point, once we've seen enough and absorbed enough, we become very intuitive 
And that's the goal. The goal is to become intuitive. Does anyone have any questions about that? Okay. So this is Joel Meyerowitz, um, who still shoots today. And there are, uh, we, we, we're gonna watch a video next week um, of Joel Meyerowitz if we have time. So we, I wanna make sure we look at your work next week. So, you know, this is just, you know, seeing a convertible and thinking to myself, this is a stage. What could possibly happen here? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get closer to that convertible. That's sort of the thought process. You know, John, John Meyerowitz, when he talks about street photography, he talks about gesture. So we've got a number of gestures happening in this picture, but he talks about gesture and he talks about how if you see someone perform a gesture on the street and you miss it with your camera, that like a lot of other things in life, like history, um, that person will most likely repeat that gesture. So Joel Meyerowitz used to follow people based on, you know, if they were gesturing, how they looked on the street, what their sort of performance was on the street. And he would follow them until he got the picture. So, so that's also something, <clears throat> if you're in, in an area where you can do that, is to look for th things that are like sets, like movie sets, or like, you know, these, this is beautifully composed. And that's something you can do ahead of time. Hopefully something will happen in that space, but, it, but it's something that you can think about. This is Lee Freelander. And now images like this, you know, are commonplace, but not at this time. You know, this was, this was something that we hadn't seen before. So photography is about finding out what can happen in the frame. When you put four edges around some, around some facts, you change those facts. Gary Winogrand also said that when you put four edges around a picture, you create a new world. So think of it that way. So, so you, are, you are creating, this is a subjective choice on your part. So you're making a choice and you're making a selection. And that's, that reflects your, your view and your point of view. So I'm, we don't have a lot of time left. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip ahead. You can look at some more. I'm gonna just talk very quickly about techniques. So when you're, I, I would like all of you to go out and take pictures um, in between this class and the next class. And, and I would like you to bring five of them with you. And if you can, I would love for you to email them to Amy or email them to me prior to, to class so that I can put them in the presentation. So go out, take a lot of pictures and choose five that you want to talk about or five that you that were challenging for you or show me where you were and um, in the picture and we can talk about maybe where you can stand that sort of thing so things to think about you want to look normal right you want to blend in with the background so one way to do that is to stop moving when people stop moving they tend to blend in so if you see something, a, a place that has potential, sit down, stand there, be quiet. Um, dress for the environment. So if you're gonna be out in the sun, make sure you've got your hat, sunscreen. If it's raining, make sure you've got, you know, clothes that are waterproof. You'd be surprised how many times you're out and you get so involved in what you're doing and it starts to rain, you're like, ah, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go in but make sure you're prepared. So always, always be prepared for whatever environment you're going to be in. Know who you're photographing. So have some sort of sense of the culture that you're photographing, right? So if you are photographing on Nantucket, you know, what is that culture and what does that say to you? And how can you work with that culture? And how can you be part of that? Because, you know, people are going to want to be, want you to, be you know um, part of their 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 culture that makes it easier to get the picture. Use simple equipment. Use a small camera. 
use um, you can use all automatic settings if you have a camera. Just go ahead. I just I really just want you to take pictures. You can put everything on auto. You can use your phone. I would urge you though, if you're using a phone, make sure that you're taking high resolution pictures. So go into your settings and make sure it's set to uh, best quality, highest quality, what, whatever your camera, whatever your phone offers, that's the highest setting. Um, if you're using a phone, chances are you have a wide angle lens. If you have an iPhone that has the portrait feature, don't use that. You wanna be using the wide, the widest, um, the widest that your camera can shoot. Find a place, a stage, and stay in one place. Try this. You don't have to do it for the whole time, but it's one strategy. So I urge you to just try that out and see, see if you can be an observer and blend in. Become a tree. Um, you know, find, find the environment or find the event, right? Parades. Fourth of July is coming up. There's going to be a lot of people around. Um, ferries are great. On the ferry, off the ferry, um, any sort of public transportation or public place like a train station or an airport. So those are those are really good places where you can observe and 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 you might not be detected if you're worried about that. Um, become part of the energy of the location. So if if people are moving in one direction and you're standing in the middle of them and they have to go around you, well, you know you're gonna get noticed. And you might, you might actually it might be a strategy to get a good picture, but, but think about what the energy is like. You know, if you are, you are photographing people coming out of a, a funeral home, right? Note the energy. If you're photographing people on vacation, note that energy, right? So you want to sort of duplicate the energy that is around you. And then, you know, don't process your images. Shoot wide angle, don't crop them. You know, just bring me, bring me five images that you've really done nothing to. Because that's not what this class is about. It's not about processing images. It's, it's really about observing composition and, you know, seeing what you can do with the humanity that's around you. Does anyone have any questions about this? Mm-hmm. Anyone? You can just unmute. Yeah, so five images. Oh, actually, Eileen, I have a quick question. Yeah. It's like an etiquette question. You covered this a little bit, but like, have you ever been in a situation where you photograph someone and they're like, why are you taking my photograph? And sure. how do you smooth that over and what do you say? There's a couple of things that you do. Um, it, the first thing is you act stupid. That's what I do. I, I, I'm just like, I, and I, I usually, what I do is, you know, I'm always, I don't approach anyone I'm not interested in. Let's, let's get that right out. Don't approach someone that you're not interested in, because if you are not really interested in them and you're just doing this for the assignment, then that could go really badly. And if you're really interested in the person and you feel, you know, you, you love something that they're wearing or you, you love how they're carrying it, or they look fantastic, tell them that. Like, you look absolutely great. You know, I'd really love to take your picture and just doing this little project for a class, right? That's, that's what I do. And I always dress like a tourist, right? Here on, on Cape Cod or Nantucket, I, I make sure I blend it. I look like a tourist. And, and I'm always wearing flip-flops and I'm wearing like, you know, patchwork shorts, right? So I do that and people don't question me a lot. And I'm also very conversational. You know, I, I always, I go up to someone, I'm like, oh, I really like what you're wearing, you know, and, and I, I'm quick though. You know, I, I do, I do, don't want them to change too much. Go ahead. Uh, Did that, that's a, I didn't have anything to say. Oh, okay. So that's kind of what I do when I approach people. If people are negative, say thank you and leave, right? Don't, don't even pursue it. If someone is, is asking you a lot of questions, where's this picture going to go and this and that, just end the deal it's over you know and, and move on I, i've got a question if you if you enter into this dialogue aren't you going to end up with a set pose well mouth? that's up to you how do you how do you handle that right and one of the things i would suggest to you is um you take the smiling picture and say oh smile and then say, oh, hang on one second. I just need to, I want to just fix something here. Keep your camera in place. And then quickly snap another one. 
<laughs> get them off guard, right? Make them do the, you know, cheese, all that. Great. But as soon as they stop doing that, that's the picture that you want. Right. You know. So take at least two, right? You, you want to, you know, and then some people, you know, if you sit with them, you know, I have, I have a rather large camera. Where's my camera? Um, it's over here. So I have a rather, rather large medium format camera that I use and, and it's all manual. So I just say to them, you know what, this is kind of old school. I got to set this up. Even if you're using automatic, just say, you know, I got to, I got to check my settings and that'll get them to relax. And, and that's sort of what you're, what you're looking for. It takes a little practice, but, but you'll get it. When is the next?